Hey guys, welcome back. This is the preludes to part one, two, and three. I will be combining everything into one long video because it's going to be back on Facebook. Parts one and two are still available on YouTube. The reason I'm going to be combining everything is because A, it's easier to share it that way on social media. B, when you have multiple videos, there's always gonna be one video that gets less views for some reason. I don't know why that happens, but it's just the way it is. Um, and I want all of these to be treated equally, you know what I'm saying? I also ask, as always, no hateful comments, no negative energy. I will literally delete all hateful negative comments. Don't want to hear them. I ask that if you do have something to say, you watch this video in its entirety. If you've already seen parts one and two, you can skip to part three. Uh, each segment of this video will be labeled right on the top. It'll say part two, part three, etc. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, no hate, none of that. This is all going to be one long video. Uh, according to my estimate, uh, it's going to end up being around an hour long. Um, and I, I think that does justice, you know what I mean? Uh, this is for Abby, you know what I'm saying? I also want to say that <clears throat> because of these videos, According to my journalist sources, and I trust these sources, they are people I respect with integrity, they have journalistic integrity. Because of these videos, a new investigation was opened up in some parts. So just remember that, okay? A great example is the Ahmad Arbery case. His killers just got found guilty, but originally, the case kept getting thrown out by a crooked DA. Remember. They didn't get in trouble until we seen the video, the public. You know what I'm saying? So we do have power. That is the purpose of these videos. And it's working. You know what I'm saying? They are responsible. They could have prevented Abby's death. Part three, we'll, we'll definitely get into, it, get into it. Anyway, man, I appreciate y'all. Without further ado, here's parts one, two, and three combined. Rest in peace, Abby. What's up, y'all? It's your boy DJ Triple Six, B Hall. Now, I'm here to talk to y'all today because I've been seeing a lot of bullshit lately. A friend of 20 years, Abby Renee Hill, is gone. A mother, a daughter, a sister, an aunt, a good friend, sweet, one of the sweetest person you'll ever meet, you know what I'm saying? She also had a savage side, just like we all do. Anytime anymore I see her name, especially by Alpina News, True North Radio, Up North Live. Anytime I see her name, even after her death, it was, Abby Hill is wanted for this and this. Abby Hill is a suspect in the Bryn Bill situation. Now, I am not going to talk about the Bryn Bill situation. I might touch base on it because I have to, but that's just because I have to. Rest in peace to that, that young woman. She did not deserve what happened to her, and I hope the people that are responsible, <coughs> Brad, <coughs> Josh, get what they get. You know what I'm saying? Excuse me. Now, uh, I think it's really fucked up that the news sources in this town are so dry that they don't they don't care about destroying a person's legacy when they don't even have the facts. Yes, you can say somebody's a suspect in something, but when you constantly attach it to that person's name, that's all people are going to remember. I went to Abby's funeral. I was one of the lucky few that got to go. Not that it's something enjoyable, but I was glad to be there to sell it for her final celebration. Now, being one of the lucky few that got to attend, I also got to say some words at her funeral. When we walked out of her funeral, a truck drove by and somebody leaned out the window and screamed, Fuck you! And it was a large group of us. Now, maybe, maybe it was directed at somebody in the crowd. But I'm sorry, I just... Too coincidental. Everybody knew what was going on that day. A, a, a vast majority, anyway. And that's my point. Because of the news and things like that, Abby has been demonized as this terrible, wicked person. When reality is, I truly don't believe, and also a vast majority of people don't believe, including her personal family, that she had anything to do with the death of this other young woman. Just because she was Brad's girlfriend does not mean anything. I can go out and commit a homicide. Does that make my wife guilty just because she's married to me? No, of course not, okay? <clears throat> Fact of the matter is, if Abby had something to do with it, I truly not do not believe that the uh, person that murdered her would have murdered her. You know what I'm saying? I just, I don't. <coughs> Brad, excuse me. Now also, like I said, 
I attended her funeral. I know her, her close personal family. I've spoken with the family. That's where I got a lot of this information from. And I've spoke with them. I've let them know I'm going to be making a video. So any type of negative feedback, hateful comments on this, I will not entertain whatsoever. And any local sources that want to pick this up, I truly appreciate you because I would like to at least leave a good legacy but also those responsible, I want it to be known who's responsible, such as the Michigan State Police, Alpena Hunt Team, Narcotics Team, City Police, and things like that. For those that don't know, the police in this town, especially State Police, they will do whatever it takes to solve their case, and that doesn't matter anybody they have to sacrifice. It was known weeks before Abby got a warrant released or put in jail that she was in, in danger, okay? They contacted her, her family and said, we believe Abby is in danger if you could help us find her, blah, 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 right? They knew she was in danger. The reason she had a warrant was because she got pulled over for driving without insurance, which I guarantee a vast majority of you have done in your life as well. She got pulled over for driving without insurance and she missed one of her court dates. Now it's known that she was wanted for questioning, but contrary to po po you know popular belief in the public, being wanted for questioning does not allow, does not warrant a statewide manhunt. What they did is wrong. They used any excuse they could because they wanted her for questioning. The way wanted for questioning works, if you're stopped locally, say you were speeding, they will then radio to the other district and let them know, hey, we have this person detained if you want to speak with them. But after they speak with you, they have to let you go. You do not go to jail for being wanted for questioning, nothing like that. So she was driving without insurance and missed a court date. It wasn't an issue until they wanted her for questioning. And that is my point. They will use dirty tactics to get any information they can. And it's pretty clear that when they finally got Abby, she didn't help them. So therefore, they disregarded her. Brad's best friend, Bruce Kinsey, bonded her out of jail. And then a few days later, she ends up murdered. I, I want you to look me in my eye and tell me that's a coincidence. Go ahead, I'll wait. Now, I was Michigan State Police and the, these other divisions, I believe they played a major role in her death. I, that does not mean they killed her. Abby most likely was already in hiding before she had the warrant. The news outlets, Alpena News, True North Radio, things like that, also the police attention, brought her out into the spotlight so the killer could end up finding her. Obviously that was not their intention, but they knew that was a possibility and they still disregarded it. Even her personal family, they contacted her family and they believed Abby, they were hiding Abby and they said, uh, you know, if we don't get this on record, then we talk to you. Alpena State Police and Alpena Narcotics Team will be kicking in your door tomorrow. Does that sound like somebody they want to protect or does that sound like they're doing everything at all costs to get information? See, what happens is this has now become politicized. This is a big deal in the city. I want somebody to name any other time the prosecutor, Cynthia Mashinsky, personally goes to a crime scene. And there's proof of that. I'm sure everybody's seen the photos in the news. It has become politicized. So they will do anything at all costs to get information. They knew Abby was in danger, but they disregarded it because they just wanted information to solve this case. Now, they caught her, they brought her out into the spotlight, they put her in jail so everybody knew exactly where she was. She then gets bonded out, she then ends up getting killed. State police knew she was in danger and they did nothing about it. The narcotics team in this county can track somebody for a dime bag of cocaine for fucking two years straight, but you're telling me that you knew Abby was in danger and you couldn't do anything about it? Bullshit. It's because she didn't give you information because she didn't have any because she wasn't part of it. Also, I'm sorry, this entire Greg Schulke thing, nothing in his story makes sense. He was supposedly handed cocaine that he threw out the window. He deleted all the call logs and he waited seven days to contact the police. I'm sorry, but I believe that person is responsible in uh, not her death, but Bryn's death. I'm sorry. I'm letting it be known. Hate me if you want for that. But I've talked to a lot of other people and they agree with me. No nothing in that motherfucker's story makes sense. As for the police... Abby's death was 110% preventable, but they didn't do anything about it because they're too worried about solving this case because it's been politicized. Do not comment on here if you are not familiar with the police tactics and the court tactics in this community because everybody that is, they know exactly what I'm saying right now. This young woman, her life could have been spared and protected. Don't sit there and tell me there's nothing you could have done, Michigan State Police. And Abby's brother even told Michigan State Police, he believes the same thing. He told them, her blood is on your hands. Even her family agrees. This is fucking bullshit at the highest level. Like I said, a mother, a daughter, a sister, gone. A life gone. Her children were at a funeral. I watched her children cry. Heartbreaking. Like I said, I said some words at her funeral. I cried. My homies cried. The couple that were invited. It was a closed ceremony. And you know why? Do you know why it was a closed ceremony? Because Alpina News, True North Radio, all of this shit, because they have been dragging her name into the ground. 
The family was in fear of retaliation at, a, at her funeral. Her final celebration of life couldn't even be open to the public to the degree it, could, it should have been because they were in fear of retaliation. The people doing this should be ashamed of themselves. Abby was the, the sweet, one of the sweetest people you'd ever meet in your life. But y'all don't know that. All y'all see is these news articles and the people writing these news articles, you can go fuck yourself and go straight to hell. There's no such thing as investigative journalism anymore. The Alpina News, True North Radio, and all the people like that, all they do is get the police report they, and they read it on air and make a little story out of it. I touch base with journalism from time to time and guess what? I dig. I look up information. That is investigative journalism. Here's another instance for you, okay? Everything the news is doing to Abby, right? I had a friend a couple years back. He was charged with inciting a riot. Alpina News was quick to quick as fuck to write a story about it, right? Charges ended up getting dropped because it wasn't true. Do you think the Alpina News did a retraction story? Fuck no. Fuck no, they didn't. But guess what? The general public believes wholeheartedly that that person started that riot. And they believe he's a monster, even though it wasn't true. This is the type of shit I'm talking about. Abby may have not even been a suspect, but the news constantly paints her as one. It constantly paints her as this monster as much as they can because... They don't do fucking shit, but read a couple of things online and then copy and paste it onto their news articles. Disgusting. Fuck True North Radio. Fuck Alpena News. Fuck Up North Live. Fuck Michigan State Police. Fuck all of you. And if this video is too vulgar for you, fuck you too. I don't give a fuck because somebody is dead. I knew Abby for 20 years. Michigan State Police had blood on her hands. They could have prevented her death and they didn't. You should be fucking ashamed of yourself to the highest degree. And the person that drove by her funeral and screamed, fuck you, if I ever find out who you are, we're going to have a chat. Say what you want about this video, but like I said, any negative comments or shit like that, no, don't care. Like I said, somebody is dead. Now, if this video doesn't make enough sense to you and you still try to argue with me that the police are saints, you, you're, you boot-licking fucks, I don't want to hear it. Her family even wholeheartedly believes that Michigan State Police could have prevented her death. Yet here also, we are. I'd just like to add, disgusting. Uh, Rin Bill's father, I believe his name is, is Wayne or Dwayne Bills, he made a comment that it is Abby's fault his daughter's dead because she introduced him to these people. That's another example of running her name into the ground, okay? Just because she may have introduced them, okay? I, I'm not gonna go further because I could go a lot further, but uh, I believe that comment is, is disgusting and I'm sorry And I'm sure that's gonna piss some people off, but I don't I don't care When Abby introduced them, obviously she had no malice intent There's no way she could have predicted what was going to happen just because she introduced somebody to somebody else that doesn't make her responsible it, I, I guarantee you I guarantee you on my life if Abby would have known what was gonna happen to Bryn she never would have introduced her. Obviously. That is so obvious. And I understand people are grieving and people like to place blame when they're grieving because that's part of the grieving process. I understand that. Like I said, I'm not going to run this other young lady's name into the ground. I'm not speaking on her. I'm speaking on her father's comments. And like I said, name any other time that the prosecutor goes out to a crime scene. This has become politicized. And the fact that the prosecutor, Cynthia Mashinsky, could be more involved in a community like that it's very possible, obviously, she can go to any crime scene, but she doesn't. She only goes to the ones that will make her image look better because she's obviously trying to break this case because if she does, she'll get reelected or what have you, whatever they do. Disgusting. In that case, she is literally profiting off of somebody's death. Disgusting. That's the thing in this community. They charge people with ridiculous crimes. The only way you can go to jail in this county is to have a felony. So if you get a misdemeanor charge, they will bump it up to a felony any way they can just so they can put you in jail. And then when they don't have evidence, they'll hit you with extra bullshit charges. That way you can't fight the original charge and you have to take a plea deal. I've lived it. I've experienced it. So don't try to tell me different. This was so preventable, man. Fuck Cynthia Mashinsky. Fuck Michigan State Police. Fuck these comments about Abby. Fuck all of them. Fuck all of you that, that want to disagree and run this, this young woman's name into the ground. There are children that will never see their mother again. There are people that loved her dearly that will never see her again. A daughter, a mother, a sister, gone. Never coming back. She is now in a box this big, cremated. And it was 110% preventable. Michigan State Police used her as a pawn and they could have protect, protected her and prevented her death, and they didn't. And guess what? They'll get away scot-free. That is the point of making this video. I want the truth out there. I want it to be known. 
Like I said, the family wholeheartedly agrees with everything I'm saying, and I spoke with them prior to making this video, and they know I'm making this video. I'm technically making it on their behalf. They didn't ask me to make it, but they know I'm making it because I am outraged at the fact that once again, the police in this county have used somebody as a pawn and they don't care whose life they will, they, they have to destroy to get what they need. Michigan State Police are some of the biggest vindictive fucking assholes you will ever meet. And I pray you don't ever cross paths with them. I truly do not wish that on anybody. They are not here to help anybody but themselves. The more arrests they make, the more tickets they write, the more funding they get at the end of the year from the government. Cynthia Mashinsky politicizing all this for her career is disgusting and everything else going on that is corrupt in this case. I feel I've said enough. Like I said, I will not entertain negative comments, so you can say what you want, but I'm not going to read it. Any local sources that may or may not pick this up, I truly appreciate you. I just want people to understand that Abby was not a monster. She was one of the sweetest people you'd ever meet, but a lot of y'all don't know that. True North Radio and Alpena News, get your fucking shit together because I'm so sick of it. I have a platform and the power to always put you on blast, remember that. This is not a threat, I'm just telling you my capabilities as well. You are not the only ones in this community with reach. Get your shit together. Michigan State Police, I hope you burn in hell for sacrificing a young girl's life just to make a case. And guess what? You didn't even get really anything out of it, did you? So a life wasted for nothing. Even if you had got something, that's still not worth trading a human life. Fuck you. That's all I got to say, man, really, bro. I'm just getting pissed at this point. It's your boy 666, man. Holla at your boy. video starts I realized that I didn't really give an intro I wanted to say do not come in here with any hateful comments I request that you come into this video with an open mind I'm not saying you can't comment but spewing purely hateful shit if you can't have a civil articulate type of conversation don't want to hear it I will not respond to negativity in any form and any pages that pick this video up that I send it to greatly appreciated even if you don't, it's whatever. I wish you a good day. <clears throat> if you have not seen part one yet, I highly recommend you go and watch part one. As this video that you are about to see is part two. I slowed the audio down a little bit so it's a little more legible. You know what I'm saying? Also, I mastered the audio in my studio so the audio will be more clear and enunciated. Okay? If anybody has any questions, they most likely, you guys most likely know who I am. If not, the news pages, if any, share it. Well, you can contact them and they will get in contact with me or whatever. They will shoot you over to me. All right. Come into this video with an open mind. And if you have not seen part one, go watch it now. It's available on uh, Alpina, keeping it real in Alpina that I've seen. Also, it's available on Slab All Stars YouTube. <clears throat> Have a great day. Welcome back to the Abbey Hill discussion part two. I want to start out by saying thank you to the 99.9% .9 positive approval rating. Like I said in the first video, a mother, a daughter, a sister is gone. Abbey Hill is gone and she's never coming back. And a lot of that has to do with police misconduct to the highest fucking degree as well as other mitigating factors, and we will get into them today. Now, I have actual proof. I have screenshots, conversations, where police were being fed information by Abby's family, willingly, to help in any way they could. I had a lot of comments yesterday asking, well, why didn't they just speak up and help and do the right thing? All of that was, was taking place. It was trying to happen. But you see, it's almost, I, I've, I've done a great deal of research on this topic and I keep coming up with the same question. Why did the police do what they did? And seriously, the only thing I can come up with is they either have an ego complex, they have to be the ones to find out information themselves, they, they might ask for tips, but it's like they refuse to let the public help. It, it's so bizarre. To the degree I've studied all of this, I keep coming back to that question. Why did that, the police do what they did? And I honestly don't have an answer. Now, like I said, I had a lot of comments yesterday of why didn't Abby just do the right thing? And why didn't Abby's family help? And 
they were, and she was also doing exactly what you guys keep saying. Now, like I said, I have actual screenshots of the police ignoring tips down to where Brad kept his drugs, where, you know, his drug stash, down to the precise location within a five foot radius. They were ignoring it because the police were begging for something to hold Brad on and they were getting tangible evidence from a 110% credible source. In fact, this source was so credible, the state police were actually trying to get this person previously to testify against Brad just so they had something to hold on him. But then all of a sudden, that same family of source is no longer credible? What? And it's not that they said the source was no longer credible, they just didn't listen. Had they followed up on that tip, Brad could have been taken into custody sooner, which could have prevented death. I don't know, death. There was serious police misconduct in this case, but the problem is we'll probably never get justice for that. I do believe there's grounds for major lawsuits in this. I'm not gonna get into that, but I believe there's grounds for sure. I've studied the law extensively in my life. I've experienced the law extensively in my life. I've been around it. Yeah. Also, everybody kept saying, why didn't Abby just cooperate? Abby was, Abby was trying to cooperate. In fact, Abby's family was playing mediator with the police. So there was Abby, her family, police. Her family was in the middle, mediating. Put yourself in Abby's shoes for a minute. She was so scared because she knew somebody was after her that she didn't even know if she could trust the police. In fact, she asked her brother and other family members, are these detectives good guys? Are these the good guys? That is where she was at. Now, Abby was forthcoming and she ended up getting it set up to where she was going to have a phone conversation with police. And she was honest and upfront and she said, I don't want to come in and speak to you because I have a warrant and it is because I drove without insurance and I missed court. And the state police said, we don't care about that. Just come in and talk to us, right? So they had that all set up. Abby was going to cooperate with everything that she knew. Once again, Abby was not part of Bren's death. She was not part of it. And like I said before, just because you are dating somebody does not make you complicit in a crime. If I go out and commit a homicide, does that make my wife guilty simply because she's married to me on those grounds only? No, of course it doesn't. Abby had it all set up to speak with police, right? So the day comes and she's supposed to speak with police like later in the afternoon. That morning, out of nowhere, state police, before ever even giving Abby the chance to speak to them on the phone, decide to just pull that warrant, contact the media agencies, and here we go. That's when all of you started seeing the warrants pop up. Now, that is dirty as fuck. So in that instance, the one group of people Abby thought she could count on and depend on and was promised were the good guys, totally did a 180 and turned her back on. So at this point, put yourself in Abby's shoes. She was already in hiding and it was known she was in danger weeks before. She was scared for her life at this point. Put yourself in her shoes. She's scared she's going to get killed. And then the one group of people she thought she could depend on pulled the rug out from under her. What would you do? Would you then clam up? Would you keep hiding? Of course you would. And see, these are the things I'm trying to bring to light because no matter what, Abby is gone. She's not coming back. She doesn't get to tell her side. Bryn's side has been told in depth for quite some time now. And like I said, I'm not talking down on Bryn in any way. Rest in peace to that, that beautiful young lady. She did not deserve what happened to her. But Abby was not complicit in Bryn's, Bryn's death. She was not. The one group of people she thought she could count on, Michigan State Police, threw her under the bus. They treated her more like a suspect instead of a victim. And she they knew she was going to be a potential victim. They are the ones that alerted her family weeks before the warrant that she was in danger. Just like I said in part one, is it starting to make sense to you why the question keeps coming up of why the fuck did they do that? You're going to keep coming back to that question. Why did they do what they did? Why did the police do what they did? Moving ahead, I had several um, questions and comments about the tow truck situation. Greg Shulke apparently uh, implied that Abby was complicit in this hijacking being held at gunpoint situation. No. 
like I said, just because she was dating somebody does not make her complicit. Also, Rick Shokey's story is so full of holes, it's not even funny. He was supposedly held at gunpoint, handed a bag of cocaine that he threw out the window. He deleted all his text logs, he deleted all of his call logs, and he waited seven fucking days, approximately, to call the police. Did you wait seven days because you did that cocaine, Greg? Did you? I'm very curious. So I'm sorry. His story is so full of holes. It's very clear that he is lying. So I'm not going to believe that Abby was part of it based off his word. I refuse to believe that. And you guys should too. You guys should not just follow the main narrative. You should always question this shit. If he can't be trusted to tell just what happened to him as the victim, what makes you think he's credible in any form? In a court of law, when it, when you lie like that on the stand, you sh your credibility is shot. You actually can cause a mistrial. It is so fucking obvious Greg is lying. At least about, at minimum, one thing. It's obvious. And I had nothing to do with the situation. That is grounds to cause a mistrial. That is grounds for these two young ladies, Abby and Brynn, to never get justice by a mistrial. Because if they get a mistrial on the tow truck situation, that can cross over to the murder investigation. Because I guarantee you the defense will use that. And they will say, Your Honor, we already had a mistrial in, in the first round of this. At this point, it is simply a witch hunt. I'm paraphrasing what the defense would probably say. So don't take me literally at face value for what I just said for all the fucking idiots watching this. Also, the police were so just at odds to find Abby. Abby had an apartment. That apartment was in Abby's name. Abby was at that apartment quite a bit, but they couldn't find her. Also, the fact that I don't care on what planet you live, getting pulled over, driving without insurance, and then missing a court date for that, that does not justify having your face blasted on the news to the degree, to any degree, a manhunt ensuing, state police trying to find you at all costs. They acted like she killed somebody. Hmm. Meanwhile, they were being fed tips about the real killer that they ignored. That is, see, the question comes up again. Why did the police do what they did? It makes no fucking sense whatsoever. Now let's get to the media. The media has demonized Abby so much. They even brought up a larceny, a larceny charge she had from years back. What does that have to do with any of this? It doesn't, but that's what the media does. They are demonizing her. So at a subconscious level, they are convincing you she's a bad, hard criminal. She's a terrible person. Alpina News, True North Radio, all you fucking sites. Mother, fuck you for that. Especially that comment. Fuck you. And I would blast you crooked, biased pieces of shit till the day you die. Her larceny had nothing to do with it. But the media has been demonizing Abby so much that there are rumors circulating that they were all complicit in sex trafficking. That Abby was part of a sex trafficking ring. That is what the media is doing to this young woman's legacy and reputation. I promise you, Abby did a lot of good in her life, whether or not it affected you. But in the blink of an eye, because of the media, her entire reputation is tarnished. That is why I am here. I am defending those that cannot defend themselves, whether you like it or not. What's funny though, what's really funny, the news sources in this town, Alpena News, True North Radio, Up North Live, what, what have you, I have 110% proof that they're biased, and here it is. They will run defenseless people like Abby into the ground that can't even tell their story. Meanwhile, Judge Michael Mack, it was proven proven that he was trading sexual favors in court. Judge Mack, the circuit judge, I'm sure you remember him. He was trading sexual favors in court for lighter sentencing. I personally know one of the females he was trying to do it with. I've seen the text messages with my own fucking eyes. Just some light bribery, extortion, trading favors while sitting on the bench as an active judge. Simultaneously, he gets his third, one, two, three, his third DUI. And guess what? Nothing. Alpina News didn't speak about it. True North Radio didn't speak about it. Uh, WBKB didn't speak about it. In fact, I bombarded them with questions and they would delete my comments. Now, what's my point in this? That right there shows bias, 110%. So how can you claim to be a news source with integrity and honor when you are purely showing 110% bias? If you're going to speak about Abby, then you need to speak about Judge Mack. Fuck you on that checkmate. But the fact that the media has ran her into the ground so far that people are, rumors are circulating now that, that she was, there was complicit in a sex trafficking ring and this and that and this and that and this and that. They knew Abby had an apartment, they knew where she lived. 
she was willing to cooperate 110 percent until they pulled the rug out from underneath her also this uh the bruce kenzie situation nowadays a certain fact that bruce kenzie bonded abby out of jail he he has not been blasted in the media he has not been named as a suspect in fact everybody is pretty certain he was there when abby was killed like I said, I've done a great deal of research and talking to the family. There is enough proof or evidence to suggest beyond a reasonable doubt that he was most likely there during her death. At minimum, complicit somehow in her death. He's not being talked about. He's not being investigated. He's not being looked at. Make it make sense. Make it make sense. So once again, the question comes up. Why are the police doing what they're doing? What the fuck is going on? None of it makes sense, man. None of it. Like I said, the young woman is dead. Her children will grow up without a mother. And it was most likely avoidable. Had the police broke their ego complex or what have you and just taken tips. I've seen the list of tips they were given. Like I said, I have screenshots. If they would have followed even just one, they would have had grounds to hold Abby's killer. We all know it was Brad. I don't give a fuck at this point. I'll say his name. They would have had grounds to hold Abby's killer. And her life could have been spared. As mentioned earlier, it was all set up for Abby to speak with police over the phone. And then Michigan State Police did what they did the morning before, pulled the rug out from under her. Can't remember if I mentioned it, but Alpena City Police commented to the family. They have no fucking clue why Michigan State Police would do that. They were supposed to counsel with city police and keep them updated, and they didn't. So a police agency is literally saying this about another police agency question again why are the state police doing what they are doing everything the state police did is another piece into abby's death it, they're building a set of stairs if you will and every step the state police built led her up to her death a young woman is gone and i'm gonna keep saying that she's never coming back the media has demonized her the police have demonized her a lot of the general public is demonizing her although these videos are making people understand that she was most likely not complicit she was not complicit in Bryn's murder. She was not complicit in the tow truck situation. And like I said earlier, you need to question what that tow truck driver is saying. He's clearly lying, but you're going to believe him at face value, knowing that he's lying, knowing that he can cause a mistrial. The prosecution is very aware he can cause a mistrial by lying that stand. But the thing is, how are they going to prove he's lying? Hearsay. Hearsay is not, it should not be held up in court, but for some reason it is in this county. And whether that's good or bad in this situation, that is for you to determine. But also the fact that with Abby being gone, do you know how many things that can be blamed on Abby now? Because she's not here to defend herself. And I bet more than likely a lot will be blamed on her because she is a scapegoat because she can't defend herself. These are the things you guys need to be questioning and saying. I've never seen just such a large scale group of people that can be programmed sheep like sheep by a biased media system. The fact that they threw in Abby's larceny charge that had nothing to do with this should show you right there, they, they're attempting to demonize her. They are subconsciously programming you that she is the bad guy. Yet you listen to all these not credible sources of people and outlets. It blows my fucking mind. Now, with all of this information I've given you guys today, do with it what you will. I am actually astounded uh, because there was people that were dead set against Abby, but after watching part one of the video yesterday, those people even admitted, wow, maybe we were fed bullshit and we were wrong, and maybe she's not this monster that she's being painted to be. The fact that Michigan State Police pulled the rug out from under her when they were the one people she could depend on, making her more in fear for her life, when it was known weeks before the warrant even came out that she was most likely in danger, and they still did everything they did. They put her in jail exactly where the killer can find her. Brad's friend and cousin, uh, to my, from what I've heard, it's his cousin as well, but Brad's friend, Bruce, bonds her out and he's not being looked at or none of that. And then Abby ends up dead. 110%, you can say for a fact that everything the state police did led up to Abby being killed. Everything they did put her into the spotlight for Brad to find her. We all know it was Brad. To my recollection, which is pretty good, Josh was in jail at the time 
that Abby was murdered. Who else does that leave? I highly doubt it was some random hitchhiker that offed Abby. I'm sorry. I don't, I don't believe that. Not that that's been said, but the fact that the media, Alpena News, True North, Up North Live, all of these places are demonizing Abby to the point that she's being talked about as a potential sex trafficker, which is way out in the left field. You should be ashamed of yourself. This was a daughter, a mother, a sister, somebody that was dearly loved. I want all of the news sources and the police to look at this space. You could have prevented this. You could have prevented this. This was obviously from her funeral. Like I said, I watched her children cry. I watched the people that loved her cry. The funeral couldn't even be open to the public to the degree it could have been and should have been because they were in fear of retaliation over Brent because of how the media is spinning this and the police are spinning this. And I want to give a special shout out to Alpena County Prosecutor Cynthia Mashinsky. You ugly, worthless, gain off death. Cynthia Mashinsky, fuck you. From the bottom of my heart, Cynthia, fuck you. Like I said yesterday in volume one, name any other time you've seen the prosecutor go to a crime scene. This has all become politicized. There always has to be a bad guy. And like I said, now that Abby is gone, everybody can blame everything on her because she's not ever going to be here to defend herself, nor can the truth come out about her side. I don't believe she was complicit in the tow truck incident. I absolutely, she was not complicit in Bren's death. Granted, she knew things because she was dating Brad and that is why Brad made her a target. Now, if you are on the side of Brad or any of them, from the bottom of my heart, sincerely, fuck you too. There is an army of people out here that agree with me and what I'm saying. Michigan State Police, you should be ashamed of yourself. Alpena Prosecutor Cynthia Mashinsky, you should be ashamed of yourself. In fact, the only police agency that seems they were working with integrity in this situation was the Alpena City Police. And if you know me, you know I hate cops. But it seems Alpena City Police were the only ones working at an ethical level of integrity through this whole situation. And like I said, Michigan State Police swept the rug out from under them too with releasing the warrant for Abby. I don't know if there will be a volume three. Uh, I will do my best to keep bringing the information forward because Abby's story deserves to be told. I wanna to thank everybody that has took the time to watch these videos, blowing up thousands of views just in the first day. I appreciate y'all very much. This is an honor of Abby. We love you, Abby. And I promise, Abby, I will keep telling your story. Hey guys, welcome back to part three of the Abby Hill Saga. Uh, in today's episode, we're going to be going over some things behind me on the monitors. Uh, we are also going to be talking about Brad and Josh. Now, for part three, I ask... I need everybody that's watching this to please keep a unbiased perspective for the entire duration of this episode. And what that means is, please do not have an opinion towards one side or the other. Yes, Brad and Josh deserve to rock. Yes, we all fucking know that. But for one second, don't have any judgment in this situation. Pretend you don't know any of these people and you don't know anything that's going on. I ask that y'all do that for part three, for this part, okay? Now I'm gonna be reading things off the monitor, and while I'm reading them, I'm gonna be giving you the true side of things, among some other stuff, all right? According to my journalist sources, and I trust these sources, they are people I respect with integrity, they have journalistic integrity. Because of these videos, a new investigation was opened up in some parts. So, just remember that, okay? A great example is the Ahmad Arbery case. His killers just got found guilty. But originally, the case kept getting thrown out by a crooked DA. Remember, they didn't get in trouble until we seen the video, the public. You know what I'm saying? So we do have power. That is the purpose of these videos. And it's working. You know what I'm saying? Okay, we are in uh, director's mode. Yes, you can see my uh, ring light. So, I made it so you can see me and the screen at the same time. Now, let's get into this. Let me uh, just zoom in real quick. All right. <clears throat> I'm breathing heavy in this episode. I got COVID right now, but still up and grinding, you know what I'm saying? Now, Bryn Bills, Abby Hill investigation, what we know so far. 
what we know, according to the Alpina News. Let's get into this, shall we? What began in early August as a search for a missing teenager have since expanded into two suspicious deaths investigations. Alpena County Prosecutor Cynthia Mashinsky is a dumbass bitch. Recently called them homicide investigations and an alleged armed hijacking. We're going to get into the hijacking. Here's what we know so far. Of course, right off the bat, it's fucking Abby. Do you know why they're constantly putting Abby first instead of Bren? Now, <clears throat> normally, things would go in chronological order. The order of events that they happened in. Abby wasn't first. Bryn was first. It's almost like Bryn's been tossed to the side. Why? Because this is what the news does. Abby has a criminal background and things like that. Therefore, it's a more interesting read. They do this shit on purpose. They are literally putting Bryn to the side because they don't feel she's interesting enough for you guys to read about. So they always want to hit you with these ones at first. And this is not my opinion. I'm telling you what the news does. I know what they do. I do this shit too. Okay? So if you got a problem with that, which you should, take it up with these motherfuckers. The Alpina News. <clears throat> Police this fall found the bodies of two women, Bryn Bill 17 and Abbey Hill 31, in separate searches in Alpena Township. Separately, Mishinsky charged two men, Brad Shrebnik, 35, and Joshua Wargo, 34, with multiple crimes over an alleged armed hijacking of a tow truck driver this fall, also in Alpena Township. Now, this alleged hijacking took place on the 21st. Abby's death certificate marks her dead on the 22nd, 24 hours later. So, somehow, Abby took part in this hijacking, which is technically possible, but then she was dead 24 hours later. Something doesn't smell right. And we're going to get into that. Now remember, I've spoke with the family in all of this shit. I've spoke with the closest sources possible. I've spoke with journalists. I've done the actual research. I've done the actual investigating. And I will give you guys everything I know for this final part. Let's keep going. Police publicly pending the results of an autopsy. Law enforcement had not called either Bills or Hill's death a homicide or publicly named any suspects in the death. We all know who is responsible for the death. It's, it's not a fucking big mystery. But, I mean, legally, yes, I understand why the police are doing it. Until Friday, when Mushinsky in a court filing arguing against reducing Shrebnik's bond in the hijacking case said Shrebnik is a suspect in not only one but two homicide investigations, police would not comment on Monday on the investigations. It wasn't clear if Wurgo, on whose property police found Bill's body, is also a suspect. Police earlier called Wurgo a person of interest in Bill's death. Now, at the beginning of this, I told you guys, please have a unbiased perspective. And that this is why, okay? Brad had a hearing to get his bond reduced, which technically he's eligible for. I know you guys fucking hate him. Please put those feelings aside right now. I am not sticking up for him, okay? I'm giving you an unbiased perspective, and I will explain why. He had a hearing for a reduced bond, okay? Cynthia Mashinsky, being the dumb bitch that she is, spoke up and said, he is a person of interest in a homicide, yet it hasn't been ruled a homicide yet, legally, okay? Therefore, they are not suspects. Why? Because the autopsy and shit hasn't come in. So even though everybody knows what happened, they have to follow the legality of this. Therefore, Cynthia is doing wrong things, illegal things, bad things. She is doing things in court that she should not be doing. At his bond hearing, speaking up and saying he's a, per a person of interest in the homicide. First of all, it's not been ruled a homicide. Do you get where I'm going with this? My point, I'm not sticking up for Brad or Josh or any of them. My point is, they are doing this in front of everybody. And if everybody allows Cynthia and the courts to get away with doing these corrupt tactics, they will continue doing it in the future because they will have gotten away with it. So somebody down the line, you or me could get screwed because they think they can get away with these tactics. That is the point, okay? You understand what I'm saying? <clears throat> she had no argument for a reduced bond for Brad. She had no argument. And the fact that that was her argument is pathetic in itself. You know what I'm saying? I am not sticking up for Brad. I want to make that absolutely fucking clear because I know some dumbass in the comments will be like, there, 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 there. Shut up. This is for people in the future, because if you let them do these corrupt policies now, they will continue to do them. That is my fucking point. 
that was very corrupt of her to do. She should not have done that. Friends and family called Bills about Pina, a smart, caring, outgoing lover of the outdoors and music. She was last seen alive in early August. She would have turned 18 on August 12th. Police and the teen's father, Dwayne Bills of Fairview, sought the public's help in finding the girl beginning August 27th. Dwayne Bills offered a reward that climbed to $20,000 for any for information. Acting on a tip, police searched a wooded area behind Wargo's home on Naylor Road on September 28th and found Bills' body, which they identified through tattoo markings. Abby Hill in big-ass letters. On October 5th, police said Hill had gone missing. On October 16th, police said they had found Hill's body following a search of a wooded area in Alpena Township the day before. They said it appeared Hill died by homicide. Now, understand, they said it appears she died by homicide, but they do not have an official ruling because somebody doing the autopsy must give the official ruling of homicide. If you do not understand the legality and the logistics of this, you need to go learn that. Like I said, we all know it was a homicide, and it appears to be a homicide, but until it is officially ruled a homicide, nobody can be named a suspect. That is why these things are happening. I see a lot of questions about that. That is why. Now we're getting into it, okay? Police say Hill participated in the alleged hijacking with Shrebnik and Wergo on September 21st. Hill had been wanted on felony warrants related to the alleged hijacking. September 21st, the hijacking thing came about. According to the medical examiner, at Abby was pronounced dead on the 22nd, 24 hours later. It goes on to say that Abby had an assault rifle in her arms and so did Shrebnik and they were riding on the back of the tow truck. I'm sorry, is this fucking Pirates of the Caribbean? Because this sounds like some Hollywood shit. This is all coming from Greg Schulke. The, 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 the guy that waited a week to call the cops. The guy that threw the cocaine out the window and deleted all his call logs and his text logs. And that is another point. Brad and Josh and that, they're being held on that, right? This hijacking. But there is no physical evidence. This is all circumstantial. This is all hearsay. And this is my point. I am not sticking up for Brad or Josh. But every time I mention this, people jump down my fucking throat. Be unbiased for a second. Because like I said, if you allow the courts to do this, they will continue doing it to people in the future. They're being held on hearsay, Brad and Josh, on this hijacking thing. Hearsay. Hearsay does not stand up in court. You need some type of evidence, yet they're being held on it and the court is holding it up. Make it make sense. Also, these are the people that you're trusting with this investigation. They can't even follow the law correctly. And I, in parts one and two, I've already fucking let you guys know how trustworthy the cops are. You know what I'm saying? If, if they can't even fucking follow the law to hold Brad, Brad and Josh accordingly to the law, what makes you have any trust in these people? This is the point of all of this, you guys. Police had arrested Hill on September 15th, six days before the alleged hijacking on a warrant for failure to appear for a court matter. They released her the next day as, a, as is typical in such cases. First of all, that is not typical. Here goes the news lying again. It is not typical. Also, they fucking blasted her all over the news, as mentioned, and this and that, because she had a failure to appear. She got caught driving without insurance and missed a court date for it. This is why. So the, 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 the news saying this is typical for them to let her out the next day, no, it's not. They wanted her for questioning, but being wanted for questioning, they can't go put out a manhunt for you and arrest you. So they had to bring up a bogus-ass warrant because they wanted to talk to her. They never wanted her on the fucking warrant. That was the excuse to bring her in. And this is what I'm talking about. The police and the courts using corrupt tactics to do whatever they can to get information. And all of you guys are fucking cheering this on. And this is my point. You're letting these motherfuckers continue this corrupt bullshit. And they think they can go do it in the future to, to me, to you, to other people. That is my point because you're sitting here cheering it on. It might get some shit done, but it's getting shit done in the wrong fucking manner. The manner that it is not supposed to be done in. AKA, in the legal fucking manner. A corrupt manner. Also, the law is not a moral compass, but we ain't even going to get into all that. Let's keep going. 
So I already pointed out some things they're wrong about, as is typical in such cases. Yeah, okay, shut the fuck up, I'll paint it nude. Who was Facebook friends with Bills? What does that have to do with anything? Nothing. You see how they throw little bits of fucking bullshit in there to, to, to like, to d- throw digs and keep you interested? Joshua Wargo. We're not going to get into Wargo. We're not going to get into Shrevenick. We're here for Abby. The hijacking. According to the court testimony from the alleged victim, Wargo on September 21st called his co-worker at the towing company to his Naylor Road home for a ride. When the driver got there, the alleged victim testified Wargo got into the passenger seat of the tow truck while Hill and Shrevenick hopped onto the bed of the truck. Wargo had a handgun while Hill and Shrevenick each had assault-style rifles. The man testified. First of all, everybody that knows Abby, she would never do that. And unless you know Abby, you, you, you're not going to understand what I'm saying. But them jumping on the back of the tow truck with ARs and maybe Brad, but I still doubt it. This is like some Hollywood shit. Seriously. First of all, they know who the tow truck driver is, all three of them. They don't need, the, they don't need three fucking guns for the tow truck driver. They might be fucking out of their mind, but trust me, they're not that dumb. And Abby, never, never. I would put my whole fucking life on it. Abby didn't have a gun. She wasn't jumping on the back of tow trucks with ARs. This is fucking horseshit of the highest level. This is some Hollywood movie shit. Fuck out of here with that shit. The driver had long ago worked with Shrebnik in New Hill from high school. In addition to the guns, Hill and Shrebnik allegedly carried a big black bag onto the tow truck. <laughs> Wargo allegedly pointed the handgun at the driver for a few seconds, demanded the driver take them to an intersection of Lacombe and Haken, and then laid the gun on his lap. Wargo appeared skittish and paranoid and started sobbing during the drive. All three exited the truck, and when it reached its destination, Wargo then handed the driver a baggie and said, handed the driver a baggie, the driver said contained cocaine, and then Shrebnik handed the driver a $100 bill through the passenger side window and told him to tell a female acquaintance he loved her and demanded the driver leave. Where's the cocaine? Where's the call logs? Where's the text logs? Where's the proof of the weapons? That's what I'm saying. This is all hearsay. It is all hearsay. Now, if he is truly a fucking victim, I'm sorry, but I don't believe he is. I believe this is a made up story because, uh, yeah, I can't put too much of my opinion in there, but I don't fucking believe none of it. And you should question it too. None of this shit adds up with the hijacking. I remember Brad and Josh were being mostly held on that hijacking. There is no physical fucking evidence. And I am not sticking up for them once again for the fucking retards in the back that didn't hear me the first 16 times I said it. This is about everybody getting a fair trial, even those of down the line like you and me police on October 6 searched the area near the Lacombe Haken intersection with the police dog and helicopter but police wouldn't confirm whether that search was related to the alleged hijacking or Bill's death we're gonna get more into what Abby supposedly did the connections Here's what we know about the players in police's investigation and the two deaths. The players. God, I fucking hate the news. Brent Bills, Abby Hill. Right here again. Abby Hill, 31, was Facebook friends with Bills and according to police participated in the alleged hijacking on September 21st. Remember, Abby was pronounced dead 24 hours later on the 22nd. So I'm sorry. She went from being a pirate and hijacking tow trucks with swinging ARs and big dick energy on the back of tow trucks to 24 hours later, she's fucking dead. Hmm. 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 Now, I'm sorry. If you're swinging around all that big dick energy, bro, you're not going to end up dead in 24 hours. I don't give a fuck what they say. Okay? No. Like I said in the other videos, Abby ain't here to defend herself, so everybody can blame everything they want on Abby, and nothing will be done about it. Now listen, y'all. Whether or not you want to believe these news articles is up to you. I would bet my entire life on it, and so does close family and friends of Abby, that she did not 
cop on anything with an AR-15 that is a fabricated, bullshit, Hollywood scripted fucking fairy tale. And it never happened. And this is the type of shit that I'm talking about that destroys her legacy. The news constantly wants to talk about her and bring up things and bring up things and bring up things. But they don't even care what to bring up. Secondly, the court using corrupt tactics just to get a little information and to hold people is fucked up. Like I said, I'm not defending Brad or Josh. I made that clear. This is about everybody getting a fair trial. And allowing the courts to do this now, they're going to continue fucking people over down the line. To my knowledge, there is not a shred of physical evidence holding anybody to this alleged hijacking thing. Please correct me if I'm wrong. And I'm making this on December 5th, December 6th. Still nothing has came out, right? Nothing has came out to my knowledge that it's, that any of them are actual suspects in homicide because I don't even think the fucking autopsies are officially back yet. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Could be wrong about the autopsies. But letting the, the courts continue with these corrupt policies, it's got to stop, dude. It's got to fucking stop. The news destroying Abby's legacy. Her oldest child can 110% read and 110% understand what is going on. Now, let's say Abby was innocent. All of this. But she's being destroyed left and right. And apparently, the news really wants you guys to know that Abby and Bryn were Facebook friends. I don't know why that fucking matters, because everybody's friends with everybody on Facebook. I'm friends with your goddamn mom on Facebook. Who the fuck cares? They throw shit like that in there. Like, uh, back when something, something happened, and they brought up that Abby had a larceny charge from years back for, for stealing from Walmart or something. What the fuck does that got to do with anything? nothing this is ridiculous the fact that the 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 the, the fucking new i'm just fucking mind blown dude i can't even think straight right now i can't even articulate correctly the things i want to fucking say because i want to go off but i'm not here to go off i'm here to present facts and to show you guys what's fucked up alpina news needs to be ashamed of themselves they need to go fuck themselves the alpina courts need to be ashamed of themselves and go fuck themselves cynthia machinsky needs to go fuck herself 150 times. Ed Black, everybody, for allowing these corrupt policies to fucking continue. Listen, man. Everything is not always as it seems. And like I said, Abby is gone. She cannot defend herself. So guess what? Everything is going to get blamed on Abby. And by everything, I mean everything that they can blame on Abby, they will. Because no matter what, her side's never going to come out. Just like in the case of Ramada Arbery, nobody gave a shit until the video became public, and that's when things started changing. So I was a little lost for words. So in closing, okay, something that doesn't make sense to me. They held the tow truck driver at gunpoint, which means he was an unwilling participant. So why then would somebody give this tow truck driver cocaine? You know what I'm saying? If you gotta hold somebody at gunpoint, and yes, I'm sure there's background noise, I have a life. If you gotta hold somebody at gunpoint, why would you then give them cocaine? That would make them seem more of a willing participant, no? You, do you get what I'm saying? If you gotta hold somebody at gunpoint, they're obviously an unwilling participant. But then to hand them cocaine like they're your friend, that would imply, that's implicit that they were a willing participant. So which is it? Were you held at gunpoint, or were you a willing participant, Mr. Tow Truck Driver, Mr. Shulky? The world may never know. I'm absolutely dumbfounded for a great, like, closing speech for you guys. Um, thank you to anybody that's watched this entire thing. It's an hour long. I sincerely appreciate y'all. I've, I've really put some work into this. Um, a lot of things will never make sense. Like I said, Abby's gone, so obviously she will become the scapegoat. They will blame everything they can on her. People need to stop cheering on the police and the court doing these corrupt tactics. Like when they brought Abby in. Because they just wanted her for questioning. But they threw out a bogus warrant. Or how Cynthia Mashinsky is objecting at a bond hearing. On prejudice that something might come up in the future. Saying that Shrebnik and Josh are suspects in a, in a murder investigation. Yet it's not even been ruled a homicide. You, you know what I mean. 
look man y'all need to stand up against this these tyrants and shit like that if you push back against them they will do shit the correct way there's no downside to this you will ensure that maybe somebody you love gets a fair trial in the future versus these corrupt policies because i promise you if they're doing it right in the public eye right now they're not going to be scared to do it to your loved one down the road if your loved one gets in trouble that is what you need to think about i've done all i can man it's in your hands now rest in peace abby